Hey, it's Wendy. Before we get to the episode, I've got a question for you. Do you ever struggle with procrastination or perfectionism and then beat yourself up about it? I've so been there. Recovering perfectionist right here. Procrastination and perfectionism are simply tendencies of the overthinker. Yeah, that's me. The truth? Overthinking is the enemy of focus. It creates chaos instead of clarity. It obliterates our peace of mind. So why do we do it? We have no idea how not to overthink. Fortunately, we can all learn how. My friends Dana and Wendy of Camp Reinvention are so freaking awesome. And they're hosting a free three-day Stop Overthinking Challenge on March 7th, 8th, and 9th. Each day, you can soak up their wisdom and learn new skills to put the kibosh on overthinking. Isn't it time to kick all that mental clutter to the curb and get on with the business of living our best life? Come join us. I'll be there too, soaking up all their wisdom. You'll find the details to sign up for this free challenge in the show notes. We will fall down and we will fail. And life is getting back up. And you will need your community. You need your family. You'll need your ride and die girlfriend. You will need all of that. And so make sure that uh, you surround yourself with those people who care about you, who believe in you. Because you will be challenged by life. You will fail many, many times. And many of those failures will open up doors that you couldn't have seen that need to be open. Welcome to Reinvention Revels. Stories of brave and unapologetic women, 50 to 90 years young, who have boldly reimagined life on their own terms to find new purpose and possibilities. I'm your host, Wendy Battles. Ready for a dose of inspiration? Let's get to it. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Reinvention Rebels podcast. I'm your host, Wendy. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are a first time listener, welcome aboard. This is the place to come for information and inspiration about how we can reinvent ourselves, really at any age or any stage. I have the privilege of focusing on amazing women between 50 and 90 who are reinventing themselves in interesting, clever, really juicy ways to find new purpose and possibilities. And This podcast gives you a little insight into how they've evolved, the path they've taken, and how they've gotten to where they are today, sometimes with lots of challenges amid all of the forward progress. Today, you're in for such a treat, and I'm going to introduce my guest, Patricia Melton, in just a moment. First, though, I want to check in and see if you had a chance to listen to last week's episode. Many of you know that the theme for this season of the podcast, season five, is do it scared and do it anyway. I know, I've got fears. You probably do too. Sometimes we can let them get in our way of stepping into our dreams and what we're meant to do and be, or we can decide that even with those fears, we're going to go for it. We're going to make forward progress. On this first solo episode of the season, I talked about what does it actually mean to do it scared and why should we do it? Why is that so important to helping achieve our dreams? It was a short but really interesting episode beginning to look under the hood, so to speak, and thinking about what does that mean if we actually do that? So I've linked to it in the show notes. I encourage you to take a listen and come on this journey with me 
this season, as we all begin to think about, I would like to take on this idea of do it scared, do it anyway. And what might that look like? And you're going to hear from a lot of different women who are doing just that. They have some fears, they're doing it anyway, and they are evolving in really beautiful ways. One of those people that I am so thrilled to interview this season is someone who I admire and respect deeply. For those of you that are listening from New Haven, Connecticut, you probably already know Patricia Melton. You probably know the amazing person that she is and how she is helping to transform our community with the work that she does. And for those of you that don't, you're going to really get a window into her mindset and how she's reinvented herself. But you'll notice in our interview that she's an incredibly humble and modest person. And it doesn't tell the true story of her background and what she does. So I want to tell you a little bit about her. She is an award-winning, innovative educator who has worked really hard to increase educational access for communities across a variety of sectors, including in colleges, traditional public, independent schools. She is president of this really great organization in New Haven called New Haven Promise. It is a place-based scholarship support and economic development engine that funds up to full tuition at in-state public colleges, Connecticut colleges or universities for deserving high school students. But that doesn't even tell the whole story about what she does to motivate and inspire young people in many different ways. And not only is she president of New New Haven Promise, but she also is an accomplished athlete. She is a community builder. She has won numerous civic and different community awards as well as as well as athletic awards and has come back for a third time to New Haven. She was here as an undergraduate at Yale University, then came back as she was training for the Olympics and has been here for the last 10 years. So I am really excited about our conversation and for you to meet Patricia Melton. Today, you are in for a treat. Patricia Melton, welcome to the Reinvention Rebels guest chair. Thank you, Wendy. It's so wonderful to be here with you. I am so excited that I've got you in the guest chair. And I bet you can imagine I have a lot of questions for you about your reinvention journey. And I want to start in a simple way. I know that you reinvented yourself many times in many different ways. Tell me, if you would, about your most recent reinvention in your 60s. Where should I begin? I would say that I've reinvented myself athletically. I was a very avid athlete, track runner in college and in my early uh, career. But now I've become this amazing, avid cyclist, bicyclist. And I love what it does for my mind and for my body. And people know me for cycling all around this fabulous city where I live. In addition to that, I reinvented myself as I would call it a curator of adulting. I like adulting. That. Curator I of work with adulting. Yes, I'm an adulting curator. What does, and what that, does mean? that mean? Yes, what it means is I work with young folks, young adults from the age of 14 up through their early to mid-20s. And my role in my organization 
is to assist them as they're exploring who they want to be in life where we were 30, 40 yeah. years ago. That's like such and a pivotal thing. I mean, even just having someone in your life that can help guide you like that, it's like, I, I, I want that. So, especially someone that like is very relatable. So I can imagine that you have a huge impact on these young people. I think that I, um, it's, a, it's a great inflection and reflection mm. point to be down the road looking back 40 years and, and being able to sort of reflect on my own adulting process, but to be able to sort of structure and curate experiences to assist a an upcoming generation for generations, because I've been at this for 10 years now. Wow. It's uh, it's it's an incredible gift and really the best job in the world, the, the best job that I've had being able to do something like this. It's, it energizes me and it challenges me in my own journey as I am moving into my mid 60s. I think it's fascinating that you have can come to this new place where you have the ability to be of service to these young people. And I'm kind of curious about how you think your past reinventions help prepare you for this one, where you're doing this adulting and you're curating these experiences and, and really helping guide and mentor these young people. How have the past experiences helped prepare you when you reinvented yourself for this current iteration of your life, it, you know, both, both your job and also, you know, what your, your physical reinvention, which I can see because you were this amazing athlete. So I know you've always been active, but in what way do you think the past has helped prepare you for the present? Just yesterday, I was speaking to a group of high school women, young ladies about my past and the there were, there were several messages. I think I made five points. And in, in sharing sort of my journey and the lessons that I see over and over again, because a, a new group of high schoolers comes into college and then we see them through college. So I do see a pattern. And that pattern is that everything, everything you will experience will be useful to you in your journey. It will weave in some amazing macro bay and pattern to your life in terms of your path of where you're going to go to. That, that certainly has happened to me. And being a first generation person to college, I was the first person in my family to go to college. And I, I wonder, like, how did I get here? Well, I, I got here with a lot of luck, people who love me, who care about me, communities, structured programs like the one that I'm uh, fortunate and blessed to oversee now. But all of it has gone into this sort of mixture and it's come out at the other end. And it seems like it's just right. Not too hot, not too cold. <laughs> <laughs> not too hard, that. not too soft, I love that but it, it, it's, it's mixing together yeah. and coming out on, on sort of the other, other end of this journey. So my message to these young uh, ladies, just, you know, they're 14, 15, 16 years into their journey is that it will all be useful and to lean into that. Don't worry too much. Are you too far to the left, to the right? Not enough. Because you 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 have a nice runway and you'll be able to work it in to that mix in a way I, that will I, get you where yeah. you need to be. I love the image that you used of the macrame of all these different life experiences coming together because... I think that sometimes when we're going through things or we're reinventing ourselves when we're younger and things don't work out, it's hard to see how things might fit together in the future. It just often feels very disappointing. 
and it hasn't worked out the way I wanted it to work out. And I know it's taken me a long time to see how all those pieces fit together. I had to have a lot of different experiences. And I've also found that sometimes when things didn't work out, it was all for my greater good to help prepare me for this bigger thing later on, which of course at the moment you can't see and it just feels crushing. So I love that wisdom that you shared with these young ladies that, you know, it's a a whole series of things that will work together over time and not to be so worried about it because I think we can get stuck in, oh, we try so hard and, and, you know, then we get so upset. Right. The other wisdom that I shared with them. I I shared a couple of real heartbreaks in my life and that I I didn't really know how how I would get through. And I say one thing that we will all have in common is that we will have multiple heartbreaks Mm. and we will fall down and we will fail. And life is getting back up. Yes. And you will need your community, you need your family, you'll need your ride and die girlfriend. You will need all of that. And so make sure that you surround yourself with those people who care about you, who believe in you, because you will be challenged by life. You will fail many, many times. And many of those failures will open up doors that you couldn't have seen that need to be open to, once again, get you where you need to be on your journey. I love that because what it says to me, Patricia, is that you are a truth teller, that you have reinvented yourself in this way to help young people and help them understand, which is hard at that age because you're like, okay, sure. Sometimes we're like, oh, whatever. You know, people try to tell us things and, you know, we just can't hear it. But I think that that wise voice Sharing some of those life lessons is immensely helpful. So I appreciate how you reinvented yourself in a way to help serve other people and help share these lessons that are really invaluable because there are so many challenges. And I know that sometimes we start out thinking it'll be kind of smooth sailing or I see so-and-so and it seems to be working for that person. And why isn't it working the same way for me? But we're all on our own journey. So hearing those messages is very impactful, I would imagine, for these young people. I hope so. Uh, they look like they were paying attention. <laughs> I love it. That's that's all right. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. I know that There are a lot of lessons we learn along the way as we reinvent ourselves. I know that like me, you have reinvented yourself many times in many different ways. And and as you mentioned, kind of weaved these different experiences, the ups, the downs, the failures and triumphs together to create where you are today. If you had to boil it down to the most important lesson you've learned from reinventing yourself, whether it was recently or sort of over time, what would that B. I'd say to have faith, faith and belief that you will discover, you will be resilient. You know, I've been resilient. I mean, even in my darkest moments where I didn't see a path. And it's in those moments when you have to give yourself over. You just have to let go because it's not, you know, sort of the solution or getting to the other side. It's not going to come from inside of you. It's going to come from something much bigger than you. So to not um, try to control, over control situations. I I think that's the the biggest thing to, to really have faith. If you have faith, because we, you know, even though we're, educated and you know some of us have formal education some of us have just common sense right but the 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 process the the journey there's more to it than what we can even touch there's so much more to it and i think letting these these other influences uh do their job is really important Yes, I I agree. And I know how hard it is sometimes. I know that sometimes our thinking mind, we feel like we can figure it out and strategize. 
And we can do that. But to your point, it's often bigger than ourselves. And there are other forces at work. And, you know, it takes a lot sometimes to make that leap of faith, to trust that things are going to work out. But I think that when we are able to figure out how to do that, and I know everyone perhaps gets to that in their own time and way and place, but I feel like there's a lot of freedom in that feeling once you can believe that things are working out. And I'm not, I'm not talking about magical thinking. I'm definitely not talking about magical thinking, but I am talking about faith. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are so many things in this world that we cannot explain. You know, why did why did COVID happen? I mean, there are certainly studies and theories and, and whatnot, but who ever thought that our world literally would come to a standstill in our lifetime? We've never seen anything like that. Right. And we're still very much in COVID. I mean, just just like 9-11 changed our lives in terms of how we travel and, and as a nation, you know, that sense of, of that we're vulnerable. No, we're not just isolated. We are very much connected to the rest of the world. And I think COVID, the pandemic, really brought us all together in our humanity. It, it really humbled us. And now we're, you know, trying to make sense of that. What does it all mean? And how are we going to be in the world in this sort of yeah. post pandemic. And, and we're, we're very early. I, I don't think we're going to know for years. I, I think you're right. Us. Yeah, it's very true. And in some ways, it's been an opportunity, even though it's been difficult on many different levels, but it's also been an opportunity for many people to reinvent themselves for lots of yes. different reasons, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we got tons of podcasters out there, but, right? but this, this is what was needed. We we had to do something. I mean, yeah. we were locked in our homes and, you know, we're sociable beings. We're, that's that's who we are. It's so much of our fabric. And I, I, I do think folks had to reflect and are still reflecting. Things are not, you know, they're not going to go back the way they were. Yeah. I think we already see that with the workforce and it's yeah, different. It really is different. And it's sometimes hard to kind of grasp that like, like our world did a 180 and it is different and it feels different. And we move through this world differently. It's a lot to, for anyone, I think, to absorb. Was it during the pandemic that you started cycling? Yes. I love it. I, I had to get out. Yeah, I had to get out and I, I got out in our city and it was like a ghost town. I mean, there were no cars in the city yeah. a, around the downtown area. And, and, I, and I would just, I had to get out, I had to get out, and walk the streets. And, you know, I started cycling and, and I cycled for an entire year. It didn't matter. There were only I think two days that I did not cycle. And that was when we got a, a huge bunch of snow and I think some something else. But I, I cycled every day. I cycled uh, many days up to the top of East Rock. Wow. <laughs> wow. Like, I can't like... believe I did it. <laughs> but now I, I, I love cycling. I, I, uh, I did it today. I, I have to get out. And I, I love being out outdoors. It's just a way to connect to mm. my environment, to nature. Uh, you know, I saw deer and, you know, I just saw all sorts of things out there. And that, that, that kept, that encouraged me, uh, particularly at a time when we couldn't be with our friends and, yeah. you know, Zoom wasn't quite capturing our need to connect. It wasn't capturing my need to connect. I think there's something about the way you went about that. You saw the situation. I mean, did you already have a bike before the pandemic or or were you just inspired to get one during it? It was very difficult to get the bike during the pandemic. Right, I, that's course, what I remember. I already had a bike. Okay, good. During, before the pandemic. And, you know, I just got out and just started biking. But you just became a passionista about biking like all in it, which I love because I think that when we find our thing, so much to me of reinventing ourselves in a way that sticks, that we want to keep doing it is 
tuning into what is it I love to do? What makes me happy? When do I feel my best? How can I shine? And that's what I hear you saying about biking. Like that is the elixir for you that, you know, helps you do other great things in the rest of your life to be able to be present for young people that you serve, who you support and help mentor. Uh, it seems to me that that one reinvention helps this other reinvention. I, uh, it does. I, I, I can remember now that when I was, I think I was in the fourth grade. No, no, it was, I was younger than that. I think I was in the second or third grade. And I have a sister who's four years older than I am. And she left home and her bike, but her, her bike was left behind. And I was not big enough to uh, actually sit on the seat and have my feet touched. <laughs> so the bike was handed down to me. It was, it was there. And I, I didn't, I remember I didn't have training wheels, you know, because this was found a bike for, you know, someone in the sixth grade or so. So I just took the bike. I could barely hold the bike up. I took it to the top of the hill and then got on it and just stood on the pedals and coasted down the hill. And that's how I learned how to ride the bike. So you're self-taught. In... I'm self-taught. I, I definitely didn't learn with training wheels. I love it. And, and then I rode. I can remember riding around the neighborhood. I guess then, you know, people didn't worry so much about their kids. This was, you know, a long time ago. And I and it gave me this sense of freedom. I was able to explore. And now uh with like I said, with the pandemic, I was able to get out and explore because no one was outside. Right. Very few people were outside. I could just go out every day and explore, go up to East Rock or and just stand up there and look over the city where, you know, it's just so beautiful. There you can see um, yes. for miles around 360 degrees, just taking the city. It was it was wonderful to sort of keep me grounded, you know, and the animals were out and about. <laughs> they didn't know that there was a pandemic going on. Yeah, It was wonderful. It was wonderful. And then to see others. I mean, I did see folks uh, walking around and some other bikers and whatnot, but that, that really was able to take me through and and I I still do it I use it to meditate and it just you know it calms me down it puts me in a certain mental space yeah yeah I've become quite the biker hey y'all I can't help but tell you about a product I love that is helping me immensely because like you, I juggle a lot of different things. Not only am I a podcast host, but I also have a full-time job. And it takes a lot for me to stay calm, grounded, and focused. And one thing that helps me is a little green elixir I take every morning as I drink my coffee called Magic Mind. This little product is full of good-for-you ingredients like matcha and adaptogens like ashwagandha that can help you feel your best. I love it and it might help you too. If you're ready to feel focused and dialed in as you do the amazing work that you're doing, you might want to check it out. I've got a link in the show notes for more information and if you're interested, you can take advantage of saving 20% on your first order. So check out the details and let's get inspired and more focused on those things that are most important to us together. I think it's amazing. As someone who, like, I don't like biking in the city. There's too much traffic. There, you know, I have all these things about it. So I love that you're out doing it and that it's such a passionate thing. Plus, I see this theme 
in your life, Patricia, about exploration that started when you were younger and just has carried over into adulthood. And I think that's great because sometimes I think we give up on things or we think we can't do them or we get to a certain age and maybe we think I'm too old to reinvent myself. I'm too old to follow my dreams. And you are a great example of how we can get started at any age, whatever it is. There really aren't any limits if we decide we want to do something. Yes, I I agree with that. We we can reinvent ourselves. I mean, I I, I think we do. We reinvent ourselves in a year. <laughs> when the new year comes around, we're trying to reinvent ourselves. We are. <laughs> five pounds. <laughs> we're gonna be five pounds lighter or whatever. We have yeah. our New Year's resolution. I know not everyone does it, but a lot of people use that as an opportunity to say, hey, you know, I think I want to explore something. I want to experience something on my bucket list. I want to, you know, reinvent myself. Definitely. I'm one of those individuals constantly thinking about how I can experience something new and different. When I, when I decided to move here 10 years ago, I had this image in my head and I said, okay, this is an opportunity. Every time I move for a career, you know, a career move, and I go to a new city. It's it's an opportunity to reinvent. And when I when I came back here to New Haven, which was a choice of mine, I wanted to come back here. I was living in the Midwest, and I said, you know, I'm gonna be like Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do uh, it. Yes, absolutely. I said I'm going to go, and I'm gonna just totally reinvent myself. <laughs> And now, now, did I? <laughs> I have to think about that. I did actually. Yeah. There, there are a couple of things that I decided that I wanted to. I, I guess this imagery of Mary Tyler Moore was about going to a city and truly embracing that community in a way that I hadn't done in any of of the other cities that I had been to. And I've been to a number of different cities. So when I came here, you know, New Haven, I, usually I'm in a very big city. Indianapolis was my, my last locale. So New Haven is just big enough. It is a city. It's not yeah. a town, but it's big enough, but not too big that you can't wrap your arms around it. Yes. So I, uh, you know, I, I will say that as I move around the city, I, I, I definitely feel a sense of community here. And I can walk in some place and folks will say, that's the promised lady. <laughs> <laughs> sort, of, sort of like, uh, you know, you go to Cheers and everybody knows your name. And so I, I'm now living in a city where a lot of people, amazingly enough, know my name. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so I... I've gotten this this new sense of community in, mm-hmm. in a way. I've invented that or rather become part of a community as part of my reinvention journey that I, I didn't necessarily have in other locales where I've been. So so I'd say that's one very important element of my reinvention story here in New Haven. I think that that sense of community is so important as we're reinventing ourselves, because sometimes I th- think we feel like we have to do it all by ourselves. And what I've come to realize is that we can have what I call a reinvention dream team. We have our cheerleaders, the people that we know, like you said, your good girlfriends, your ride or dies, the people that are always going to be in your corner, which I think is really important as we're going through that process, because, you know, not every day is a great day. Not every day are we like full speed ahead. Some days we question ourselves, we have doubts. We think, can we do this no matter what that thing is that we want to do? So having that sense of community, people that can bolster you when you need that, people you can bounce ideas off of, people where you can just truly be yourself when you're having not your best day. That to me is all part of that idea of community that supports us as we figure out and we go through the process of reinventing ourselves because I don't think it's necessarily a straight line. I think that often we travel a circuitous path, like, I don't know, some crazy bike path (laughs) to get to where we're going. (laughs) It's usually not all perfectly tied together. So community is so powerful. One of the things that comes to mind is I, I remember we made a video 
when I first came here, sort of in our first celebration of students who received the scholarship. And in this video, I, I can remember what I said then because it's it relates and it's still very much a central theme of what the organization that I'm able to lead is all about. So in this video, I said, what does it look like when an entire city embraces its young people to, through, and brings them back from college? In other words, we wrap this amazing support system. What, you know, what does that look like? And, and that's what we've been building, not just, you know, the team that I lead, and I, I'm privileged to lead, but the, the partners that we're in collaboration with. And as I, you know, as we've had this vision, that's a lot of my reinvention journey in this city is learning from this what community really means and being able to incorporate not just as someone leading this organization, having a team, you know, really having to walk the walk and talk the talk, you know, talk the talk and walk the walk. And, and it's a recurring thing because it's, it's exactly what I said. What you just said, I said to these young women, I said that you are going to need this community. You're going to need a community. Like who's going to be on your bench? Yes. You know, you're going to need your girlfriend. You're going to need your parents. You're going to need just professional, you know, networks. You're going to, you're going to need all of that. You're going to want to fill that bench out. And then you you also need your own personal, I mean, you know, you can't be just completely immersed. You're going to need that private time just to reflect as well. Yeah. All that you said is so right on. And especially what you just said about that time to reflect, because I think we live in a world that is very busy, where we're often out and about not everybody, but many of us, like looking at your life and mine, we're very busy people. And I can easily spend all my time doing external stuff and not necessarily working on Wendy on the inside. Wendy that needs to do what you're talking about, to get more quiet, to reflect, to help me on that journey, to do a lot of that internal work. And I know when we're young and you're talking to the young people you work with, I, I know some of those things are hard to get. It's hard to, okay, I'm going to do this internal work. It's not like I was thinking that when I was 16, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> looking back now and looking at the many reinventions I've gone through, I see how this internal work and this idea that you talked about, about getting quiet and reflecting is a really important part, I believe, of reinventing ourselves, of getting to know ourselves. It definitely is. I mean, we are, as I've said before, we're definitely social animals, but we're, we get to know who we are, not just, you know, in relationship with other folks, relationship with our parents, relationship with that special someone, relationship with our, I mean, our, our entire existence is about relationship. Yeah, it is. Of, of some sort. Yeah. And part of the mystery is just even going inside to know who am I? You know, I've learned a lot about myself uh, here in this city. It was really, a, I would say, my attraction to returning here, because this isn't the first time, this is certainly the longest time that I've been in this city. I came as an undergrad, so, you know, I was here for four years, but it was, it was very insular. You yes. know, behind the walls of this university that I was attending. And then I came back for two years, but I was very focused. That's when I was training, you know, trying to uh, chase that dream of making the Olympic team. And now I've come back. But the reason that I came back here is because there was unfinished business mm. closure that I needed to do. And it was all internal. It was all internal. It's been successful, but it's taken 10 years. I've been here 10 years. And I would say that, you know, when I came uh, in 2012, and now it's 2023, it's going on 11, I guess. It'll be 11 in August. I'm in a different place yeah. in knowing myself, which is wonderful to know who you are. And I, I think maybe we spend a lifetime doing that? Yeah. I'm not sure. For me, it's been a lifetime. I think so. 
I mean, I think this is a lifelong journey of getting to know ourselves and appreciating ourselves, loving ourselves. I think that all those things in a world where, again, we're so focused outside ourselves, that turning that lens on ourselves, which it can be difficult because I think there's often things we don't want to see or we maybe don't like or those darker places of ourselves that we can't appreciate. But I'm very much appreciating how you have gone on this journey and you've done this work to arrive to where you are today. And I think that's impactful for any of us when, when again, we're open and we're willing and we trust that we can figure things out. And that's what it feels like you have done. As you said, you've gotten closure, you know, in this particular chapter, you kind of brought it full circle. And I really like hearing that because so often, at least for me, I've started things, Patricia, I had great ideas. And then I'm like, well, that's not going to work out or I'm not going to do that anymore. Or, you know, I, for different reasons, I've had reinventions that I haven't been able to get through. But again, it goes back to what you said. It's all preparing us for often something bigger later on. Yes, I believe that. No, no, no. It's it's all for something. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I know we can't see I just see know it. when I get to the end, you know, not to be cryptic or anything. Yeah. I mean, not, 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 none of us know. Right. We might right. have us know. days or we might have two right. years or we might have five We have no but idea. I, I just know when I do get to the end, I want to be able to say I lived a good life. You know, I experienced all the things that I wanted to experience. Yeah, I was a, the type of friend that I envision myself being to my friends and good sister, not good sister, but just a, I had a fulfilling experience. Yeah. Like I can have some satisfaction in looking back and saying, my time on this earth meant something to someone right. and to me. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's most important and it meant something to me. <laughs> but I think that sense of trying to live without regret is a theme that I see in the women that I interview in Reinvention Rebels, that they have this desire, they are interested in pursuing those things that light them up when sometimes they don't know what path they're on or where it will lead, but they're curious and they definitely have that attitude that you do that I don't want to, when I'm 85 or however old, say, if only I had. So instead they do something about it. And I think that's the difference between what I call a reinvention rebel, someone who truly goes after her dreams and her goals and finds a way and does that personal work and uncovers things because it is a journey versus someone who eh, like, well, maybe one day or I might get there. So I think there's a different, there's a big difference. And you have that mindset of a reinvention rebel, that seeking, curious, I am going to live the best life I can can mindset that I believe really makes a big difference in feeling fulfilled and feeling personally fulfilled with our lives. Those are good words. I like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've listened to other other episodes and, and podcasts. And yeah, there is there's something, there's a certain, maybe it's not fearless because I wouldn't call myself fearless. Well, rather, maybe I move because of fear, you know, where you, you're you like, I got to get out of this situation. Yes. Or, I want something so bad that I'm just going to, I'm just going to uh, jump. I have been there before. I'll, I'll land. Yeah, right. <laughs> where I need to land, but I can't just stay mm-hmm. in this place. I always feel like that some action is better than no action. That when we do something Whatever that is, even if it's just one small step on one day to kind of get us moving, that that for me is so important about reinvention to just get into action. If you had to share advice with our listeners, and I know that some people who are listening have reinvented themselves many times, like the two of us have, and there are other people that are saying, well, I'm older And I like this idea of reinvention, but I'm not sure where to start. It seems maybe a little daunting. What advice would you have for someone who wants to dip their toe in, but they're not sure where to start on their reinvention journey? Just start. (laughs) Just start. You know, just start. I, I know as as an athlete, there there's so many days that I did not feel like Mm. moving out that door. I just, I just didn't. And I, I had to sort of dissociate myself 
from my body and you're saying, just, just do it. I hate to say it, you know, just like Nike, just do it. That's exactly <laughs> it. Do something. Just do, do it. something. You gotta just I mean, not, not, I mean, obviously a person's going to, has probably thought about it and thought about it, thought about it. But uh, in the end it's, it's, yeah, just put it, put, showing up. Showing I often, up. I say it so many times. Half the battle is just getting out the door. Truly is. Just it's, taking yeah. that steps. But you only can take two steps, but eventually you'll be able to take 10 steps. Just Absolutely. start small and just do it. Just begin. It's simple. It, it's not too complicated. No, but I think that's often what we need. I think we often overcomplicate things when they don't have to be so complicated. So keeping it simple is a, a powerful thing. As we're wrapping up, I have to ask you, if you gave your reinvention journey your multifaceted reinvention journey, a theme, Patricia, what would that be? Well, maybe it would be playing on a word that you've already introduced, which is reinvention. I've reinvented myself so many times. I, I just can't tell you, it must be 14 times. <laughs> so I, I, I consider myself a reinvention, reinventionista. That's it. my thing. Because I'm constantly, yes. I'm constantly reinventing myself. I like that. A reinventionista. Constantly. That is a new. Reinventionista. Oh, Patricia Melton, reinventionista. Mm -hmm. I love that. I cannot thank you enough for joining me in the Reinvention Rebels guest chair. This has been so much fun and such a pleasure to hear about your journey, the twists and turns, the resilience that you've had to keep on going, how you've worked through the valleys as well as the peaks and created this really amazing life. I know that there are people listening who are saying, I want to, I want to follow Patricia. How can I find her? Where can people find you do, or reach out to you on social media or otherwise? Oh, absolutely. I Google me. <laughs> <laughs> Google has uh, for everything. No, I'm, I'm at New Haven Promise. I'm right here. I'm very visible. I live in New Haven, Connecticut. It's, it's really not difficult to find me. And people send me emails all the time. I'm very public and very accessible. You are. You're there yeah. and doing amazing things. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patricia. Thank I know we've you, been talking Wendy. about this for a while oh, and we, we have. We finally made it happen. And I'm so excited to talk to you and hear about your journey and the wisdom that you shared. So much wonderful wisdom for people of any age, but especially for us over 50s, you know, that are thinking about reinvention, such great wisdom you shared to really encourage and inspire us into action. So thank you. Thank you. It has been a wonderful exercise in thinking about those reinventions, all those reinventions in the journey. And as I help our young people to reinvent themselves or invent themselves. Maybe they're not, yeah. they're so young on their journey. They're inventing themselves. Yes. But, you know, as they get up to 25, 30, they're going to start on the reinvention <laughs> right? journey. Exactly. Exactly. So you're just giving them a little wisdom now that might yes. help them and maybe yes. avoid some of the detours we ran into. So I like that. You're it's launching them on their <laughs> journey. Yes, thank you so much, Wendy. Thank this you. Is wonderful. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a wrap with the amazing Patricia Melton. I hope you feel inspired. I hope you see new possibilities for your own reinvention journey, listening to her story, and see that we can inspire and motivate and change and reinvent at any time, at any age or any stage. If this sparked something in you, I want to encourage you to listen to my audio, five questions to spark your curiosity and inspire your reinvention rebel journey. 
Because just like Patricia, we can all lean into reinventing ourselves. And this simple audio gives you five questions to start that journey. Five questions to think a little bit about what might be possible for you. Details are in the show notes. And I cannot wait to see you back here next week for another episode of the Reinvention Rebels podcast. Until then, keep shining your light. The world needs you and everything you have to offer. Hey, Rebel. If this episode inspired you to think about what's possible in your life, I'll share a little secret. Any of us can reinvent ourselves no matter where we are in our lives, any age, any stage. We just have to decide to get started. Here's a super simple way for you to get going with your reinvention dreams. Download my audio, five questions to spark your curiosity and inspire your reinvention journey. I share five key questions that will spur your thinking, help you uncover your dreams and motivate you to take action. Because if not now, when? Details in the show notes. Let's get inspired together.